Today on Cruise in Arizona, we show you how to assemble a Huffy Cranbrook Beach Cruiser. And we're going to show you how to take that stock beach cruiser and change it into a custom cruiser with just a few extra parts. And before we get started, here are the tools that we'll need. And here it is, our 26-inch women's Huffy Cranbrook Cruiser. And I want to let everyone know, don't be afraid of putting this together. This requires minimal tools. And when you open it up, it should look like this. And I dumped it out to get it to this point. So what you'll need now is a pair of scissors, a knife, or something to cut zip ties. And if you're using a knife, be careful not to cut your tires or yourself. And what we're trying to accomplish here is to get this front tire away from the rest of the frame. And when they packaged this bike, they added these spacers on the wheels just to make sure that the package doesn't get damaged. So don't throw that thing away. There's a nut in there that you'll need later. So keep cutting these zip ties until you've released the front wheel. Good job, here's the last one. Now you can set that wheel aside and you can cut one more zip tie for the rear wheel. And the next step after this is to locate your handlebars and cut that zip tie to release your handlebars. Once they're released, set them aside, you'll use them later. The next step I'm going to do is take all this cardboard off the frame. I was going to take off the rear fender, but we're going to do that after this next step. So use your knife or take a pair of scissors and just cut the tape off holding the cardboard on. Try to be careful not to scratch your frame. After you get the last piece cut off, it's time to assemble your seat. This is very easy. You just rip it out of the plastic there. It's not that hard. Grab the actual seat mount and then place it in the mounting point and tighten the screws. Don't tighten it down too much because once you have it on the bike, you're going to adjust it with that 15 millimeter wrench. And this is going to be our first modification on this bike. We are not going to use this seat. We are going to use a previous seat that has more cushion and is bigger. And if you're going to use this seat, just tighten it down enough so that mounting bar doesn't fall out. Doesn't that look nice? Now what we're using is this custom seat from a 3G bike. We just insert it in the actual spot in the frame where the seat goes, tighten down this bolt, and then there is a latch or a lever on the other side that you just press to tighten or lock it in. The next step is we're going to remove the rear fender on this bike. To do that, we are going to take off the rear wheel. You have to remove this nut and screw that holds on the coaster brake on the wheel, and then we're going to remove uh, the wheel itself. But first, we're gonna remove the screws that are holding on the fender bracing. There's one on each side of the axle. So take your Phillips screwdriver and remove that. Do the same thing on the other side. Remove the other fender bracing screw. Just use a Phillips screwdriver and it's easy. The next step is we're gonna remove the chain guard on this bike to make it look more custom. This is only two Phillips screws that you need to take out. One is going to be placed there by the rear wheel. And it's real simple. And the next one is in a tab uh, by the sprocket. And you can see it in there. Now it's time to remove the rear wheel. So go ahead and get your 15 millimeter wrench. And the reason why we're removing this rear wheel is that there is one screw on the fender that we can't get to unless you remove the rear wheel. 
So go ahead and loosen this nut on this side. It may take a little bit of force to get it broken loose. Just remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And then once you've loosened that nut, go ahead and move it to the other side and do the same thing on the other side. Just be careful not to drop the bike when you rotate it around. What Chuffy did on these bikes has made it easier to remove this rear fender. You shouldn't have to, you know, take off a rear, you know, wheel to get to that screw up here. So as you remove this, make sure that the chain is off the rear sprocket and then it should release. Just set it aside because as soon as we take the fender off, we're just going to put it right back. Now you should have access to that one Phillips screw by the kickstand. So I'm using a flathead because the screw was stripped out during installation. And once you remove it, it should fall right out. And now that the ugly fender is gone, you can reinstall the rear wheel. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take off these ugly reflectors. And these come off pretty easily. All you have to do is slide them on the spoke and rotate them and the connector will just pop right off. Now when we reinstall that rear wheel, we just repeat the process we did before, but now in reverse, making sure that the chain is on the rear sprocket, the axle is in the correct tabs, we lock down the coaster brake arm with the bolt and nut that we removed previously, and once that is on, we'll make sure that we tighten down the two 15 millimeter axle bolts. Before you tighten those axle bolts, make sure that there is a little bit of tension on the chain. And what that means is when you move the chain back and forth and put pressure on it, it should only move about an inch max. Uh, some people say a half an inch. So as you feel that tension on that chain, it shouldn't be tight enough that it doesn't move back and forth. However, there should be about a half an inch to an inch of movement when you move that chain up and down. The next step is to install the front wheel. This is very easy. Uh, the front axle on the wheel should have the two bolts in there. There are going to be these two L tabs that fit into a hole on the front forks. You just put them in there, grab your 15 millimeter wrench, and tighten down. Just make sure that those L brackets on the axle fit into the hole. Super simple. At this point your bike should have both wheels installed, the fenders removed, the seat installed, and now it's time to flip this thing over and start working on the pedals. The second upgrade we're going to do on this bike from the start is to install these metal pedals. I bought these at Walmart with the bike. They were $14 and they're well worth the extra money. To get these out of the package, go ahead and grab your pocket knife or scissors, and guess what? It's time to start cutting some zip ties again. Pedals are removed from the packaging. Uh, take a look and see which one is marked for left and right. They should have the indicators on the pedals, and make sure that you use the left one on the left hand side and the right one on the right hand side. I know that is super basic, uh, however uh, these have normal threads and reverse threads based off of which side they are on. So make sure that you are using the correct pedal on the correct side. What's also nice about these pedals is they are threaded for half inch which fits these beach cruiser cranks directly. However, if you have a 9 16 thread on your crank, these pedals come with the adapters that will thread right in. Once these pedals are screwed in, go ahead and grab your 15 millimeter wrench and tighten them up. And after you give it a couple spins when it's done, there you go, switch it to the other side and install the right hand pedal. And once again, to tighten it all the way down, grab your 15 millimeter wrench and tighten her up.
Go ahead and grab your handlebars and gooseneck. Uh, these were tightened down in the package for easy shipping, so the only thing that you have to do on this to get them ready to be installed is to loosen that nut with, guess what, your 15 millimeter wrench. So go ahead and loosen that up, and then once you loosen this up, you should be able to move the handlebars up. And this is actually our third custom piece that we're putting on this bike. Uh, we're going to install the custom handlebars, grips, and gooseneck that we had on our previous bike with our custom cup holder that we made and installed. To install this piece, it's going to be the same way we do the stock piece. Get your Allen wrench and make sure that the front tire is aligned with the gooseneck and bars. Make sure it's on straight. Tighten this down till there is some resistance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move around front and make sure that it is 100% straight. So you kind of grab and stand on the wheel and then you move the bars until you can tell that they're 100% straight. And then you tighten it down and lock it in. Now it's time to remove all the stickers. And there's about three or four stickers on each side of this bike. So go ahead and just peel them up and rip them off. And we don't need a warning sticker. Let's go ahead and rip that off. This one gives you resistance because it's a warning sticker. So take your time and get all of these pieces off. Now let's take off that Huffy sticker on the front. We're going to replace you with something a little bit custom. Now let's repeat the process on the stickers on the other side. This side does have a UPC sticker that needs to come off, and this one's difficult just like the warning sticker. You get that last Huffy wheel fork sticker off, and all the traces of the Huffy will be gone. And the last step here is to air up your tires. So find the actual uh, tire tube valve, take off the valve cap, and air up the tires. Um, make sure that uh, you air them up till they're not squishy. I mean, we can do a PSI measurement, but really just fill them up until they are not squishy. I know that's very technical. Or you can go through the actual owner's manual and find the manufacturer's specification as to how much PSI you should put in each tire. I just like filling them up till they're not squishy. And repeat this process with the front wheel. Remember, you can check the owner's manual to figure out how much PSI should go in here, or just fill it up till it's not squishy. Your choice. And there you go, our custom 26 inch women's Cranbrook with custom handlebars, with custom pedals, and custom seat. There's only one last thing we need to do. Install our custom sticker on the front. So this is really simple, just measure it out and make sure it's in the center. And if you would like an Arizona Lifestyle sticker for your bike or anything else, just leave a comment below that you would like a sticker. And when we reach 500 views, we'll ping you and I'll send one out to you. Thanks for watching our video today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing us make a stock beach cruiser into a custom beach cruiser in just a few steps. And if you like this video, please go ahead and click on the like button and subscribe. And also take a look at our other videos where we actually use these bikes. And if you are in the market to buy or sell your home in the Phoenix area, contact me. I'm a licensed realtor with HomeSmart. Thanks for watching and have a good one.